Bell could die. Yeah. Luna took me a while to get around to this. I fly solo, so it's hard to cover every single DAW, but I did get around to it this time. First, let's check our audio settings. Make sure you have your sound card set up. You should probably already have that by now. But just to be sure, make sure you're using the interface that your mic is connected to. In I.O. settings, you want to verify that your inputs are active. My microphone is connected to input one, just to make sure we know what we're doing when we're dealing with all the routings and stuff. Currently, I don't have any MIDI controller connected, but you want to go into MIDI and activate your MIDI inputs there, whether it's a keyboard controller or a MIDI connected to your sound card. Vocodyne is always best when you're playing it with MIDI. And a side note here, you do need to make sure in your audio and MIDI settings on Mac that your sound card is set to 44.1 kilohertz or 48 kilohertz. It's not going to work on 88 or 192. And now we're ready to make an audio track. And this needs to be a stereo track because Luna only supports stereo to stereo and mono to mono. So this configuration with Vocodyne it's going to be a stereo track where the left input acts as the microphone input. Once we have that, we can add Vocodyne as an insert effect. You might notice on a mono track, it's not going to show up for the reasons I just explained before. So if you have an interface with two inputs, go to the channel inputs, select input one and two, have your microphone in the left channel. If you're using input three and four, plug your microphone into input three, for example. If you're not using a MIDI controller, you can activate the auto mode, and this is basically all the setup you need to do. So click auto to activate it, but first click keys to set your scale up. And you can just click these keys manually, or you can select one of the scale presets. I'm going to go with the D sharp minor. To close it, you can hit it again, and then just activate auto mode. There's another button in the middle, pro pitch. This one is more accurate, less octave skips, but it demands a little bit more CPU. So from there on, like I said, if you're not using a MIDI controller, you're good to go. You can record it or you can uh, apply it to an existing audio track that's there. If you want to use a MIDI controller, which I strongly recommend if you want to get results like in the demo videos, for example, that I'm doing, I also recommend watching the pro usage video. Then you need to set your MIDI track up to do that. Hit track and select new instrument. I'm going to remove this quantize window and select the instrument track, rename it to MIDI controller so I can keep track of things. Heck, while I'm at it, I'm going to rename the audio track too so I know which one is the Vocodyne track. Now on the MIDI controller track, I want to go to MIDI out, which you will find in the channel strip right here. So if I click that, I should be able to locate Vocodyne somewhere in here and select one of the MIDI inputs. Uh, that's my sound card. This is Vocodyne. I'm going to select Vocodyne input one. From here, everything is ready to record and play back using the MIDI controller too. You can arm both tracks and record them at the same time. Uh, you can record them one by one. In my case, I don't have a MIDI controller connected, so I can just drawing the MIDI. That's totally up to you. I prefer playing and recording it at the same time, typically. But that's all the basic setup you need to get it working. There's one more slightly more complicated thing that you can choose to do, and that's use the new external mode. To do that, you need separate tracks, both for the microphone and for the synth or the guitar or whatever you want to plug into it if you want to bypass the internal synth. And for that, we need to merge them into a stereo track. So it's a little bit convoluted, but make an audio track, one separate audio track for the microphone. And this time it's going to be a mono track. We just want the mono signal from the mic input. Next, the synth, the guitar, the whatever. You could use an audio track, but I'm going to use a virtual synth. So I'm making a MIDI track and selecting a plugin from the list here. Now, the internal synth is very finely tuned to sound as good as possible. But when you're using a signal of your own, make sure you have something sharp that cuts through the mix and blends well with the vocals. And like I explained earlier, the inputs go into the left and right of Vocodyne. And we have to simulate this since in Luna, we can only work with mono or stereo tracks. So what we need to do is create a bus track 
The voice goes out to the main output now, but if we create a new output, make it a stereo output, a bus, and hit OK. The voice track now goes into the bus instead of the main output. Now we're going to hard pan this all the way to the left. And then we're going to do the same thing for the instrument channel, but we're going to hard pan it to the right instead. And then select the output. Make sure we pick the bus instead of the main output. Now both of these channels are going into the bus track on their own separate sides, which will allow Vocodyne to take them in as two separate channels, essentially. Now we have some information on both of these channels. They're going into the bus track. And now we can just slap Vocodyne on as an insert effect straight to the bus track. So from here, all you need to do is hit the little external button to activate the external mode. And now the tracks are being fed into Vocodyne. Make sure to adjust your levels. Right now they're clipping on mine, but that's all you need to do. Make sure to check out the interface mastery tutorial, the full tutorial and the pro usage video for more in-depth information. But you are pretty much a master if you manage to do all of this stuff. Advanced level Vocodyning in Luna.